a trip to the national championship. Women's basketball is more popular than ever, and like any success story, it was built on the sacrifice, perseverance, and vision of some very special people who had a dream and a determination to see that dream realized. Hi, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. I've personally announced over 1,200 women's basketball games in my 26-year television broadcasting career, and I'm grateful for the women and men who broke barriers changed social norms, and created a path for women like me to be able to play sports in high school and college and build a career beyond. If Not For Them is a deep dive into the true history of those who built the foundation for college women's basketball as told by the legends themselves as well as those close to them. We'll explore the origins, the characters, the challenges, and of course, the stories. Stories like the Hutcherson Flying Queens of Wayland Baptist, the winningest team in college women's basketball history. They impressed everyone who saw them. They were awesome. They were, oh, you're talking about immaculate? With howling the ball? And I'd never, I'd never seen that before. In the 1950s, they opened the door by being the first college to offer women's basketball scholarships. Plus, they had a sponsor that flew the team all over the country. I was about seven at the time, but I always remember when they were taxing out that I was going to fly the Queens. <laughs> the team won 10 AAU national championships and had a fierce rivalry with Nashville Business College. Betty Ransom once hit the game-winning shot against them on homecoming night. That was... That was probably one of the most thrilling nights of my basketball career. Over 70 years ago, the Hutchersons showed that if you support women playing basketball, they can thrive. If not for them, there might not have been such a glaring need for Title IX as we had in early 70s. Title IX became necessary because there weren't opportunities for women throughout the country like the Flying Queens created. In fact, the NCAA made it clear they were an organization for men and by men. They weren't interested in women's sports. So a group of strong women took matters into their own hands and formed their own organization. You know, I don't think there was anyone in that early era who hadn't played, who hadn't been a participant, who hadn't experienced the joy of sport who hadn't uh, believed that it was a big part of what made them who they were. So it's not a hard formula. You think about what you experienced, what you valued, how it impacted your whole life, and you want to recreate that for the next generation. And I think that's basically what has happened over time. Then there's Sanja Hogue the charismatic teacher and cheerleading sponsor from Ruston High School never had the opportunity to play basketball competitively. One day, she got a call from the president of Louisiana Tech. First, I thought I was just gonna teach and fulfill my dream of teaching on the faculty and doggone didn't Dr. Taylor call me in to his office and said, now, Sanja, a group of young ladies came and visited me up about the prospect of starting a girls' basketball team. Well, would you mind starting that program for me? Well, you weren't even on, on the faculty yet, and uh, here you are talking to the president, and you hated to say no right off the, the bat. Good thing she didn't say no. She created the blueprint for a national championship program and produced one of the most successful coaching trees in women's basketball history. And what about the legendary Pat Summit? When she was only 23 years old, she and Cherry Rapp of Wayland Baptist went sightseeing in Mexico City before competing in the 1975 Pan Am Games. And they lost track of time. We accidentally missed the last bus and it was getting dark and we were like, what are we gonna do? And Pat said, well, we're just gonna hitchhike. And I said, what? She said, yeah, we're gonna hitchhike. And I said, Pat, we can't do that. 
We don't know anybody here. She said, well, how about you think we're gonna get there? And I said, I don't know, but we better think about this. She said, well, I'm hitchhiking. If you want to, you can stay here. So I sat there and I thought a minute, and I thought, well, would I rather stand here by myself in Mexico City or hitchhike with Pat? So I jumped in the car with her. There are so many historical and entertaining stories we are capturing from all over the country. We've begun gathering these stories through phone calls and Zoom interviews to identify the key storylines. And we've also begun shooting interviews in a format approved by all the top potential broadcast partners, including Netflix, Amazon Prime, ESPN, and more, so we can build a first-class documentary series. As you can imagine, this is a huge project, but a very important one. We need your help to do this now. Please consider supporting this project. Help us ensure that this important history is preserved for generations to come. For more in-depth information on the project and how to get involved, go to ifnotforthem.com. Remember, if not for them, we would not have what we do today. Help us preserve and share their stories.